Um, this is Excel pivot tables, and I don't know how many of you have used pivot tables before, but they're I was always very afraid of them till I took this class from PRC and um, our instructor was wonderful and now I use them constantly because they're so much easier to use than uh, filtering which I used to do a lot and I still filter things but um, if I want to see something and I want a big view of it you want to use pivot tables so we have two pivot tables we're going to look at today and we're going to start with the first one and the first one is an employee one i'm going to minimize all my screens so i'm not going to see myself so you'll get to see me but i won't get to see you that's fine okay so this is does everyone see um it employee id first name last name yes okay so I'm gonna, that's a filter and I'm going to take that filter off just so you know anytime you see a down arrow you see a filter and I'm going to take it off because I don't want that on so what I'm going to do now is this you'll notice that this is just a table and the table has a field called employee ID and under the employee ID are numbers first name last name full name email, department. This is just a straight spreadsheet. And if you're going to use pivot tables, this is what you want to do. You want to make a straight sped spreadsheet. You cannot have any blank lines. You can have no subtotals. You just have data. And that's all you want. So under first name, I'll just have the first name of somebody. Full name, full name of somebody. Email, email and i'll just fill in the data and all of them have to have column headings you can't leave anything blank so this is what a data sheet would look like that would be good to have a pivot table so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make this into a table why do i want to do that when you're working with pivot tables and you have data if you don't make it into a table and you update the original table, it won't update. You'll ha you can update it. You'll have to do it like, you know, three steps to when you just do it once and you have to refresh it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this into a table. Very, very easy. And actually, I'm going to send you a new student guide because the one I gave you, this is the way I usually make it to a table. I go insert table not doing it table but it there's an easier way it's on the home tab you don't even have to leave the home tab so what you're going to do is you're going to I always go into the first um, cell so I always go to a1 you don't have to you can go anywhere in this table but I'm going to go to a1 I always just always do that I always think it's a good idea and then I'm going to go to the home tab uh, and I'm going to click right here under styles. I'm going to click on format as table. And then you can pick the way you want to format it. I usually just pick the first one, but you can pick it any way you want. And then you see a marquee. If you can see that, there's a marquee around all the data that's on the table. There are no blank lines. That's another thing why you don't want blank lines, because if you have blank lines, um, anytime Excel sees a blank line, it thinks the table's over. That's why when you create tables, you never want blank lines in them. You want them to be all together. So I have no blank lines. There's a marquee around it. My table has headers. Always make sure you see my table has headers. Headers are the field names. Employee ID is a header. First name is a header. Last name is a header. So always make sure that that is checked. I'm going to click OK. And now I've made a table. So the reason I want to make it a table is if I go down, and actually we'll do this in a minute. I'm going to show you why it's important that I made it into a table. But first of all, now that I made it into a table, now I can make it into a pivot table. So I'm going to click on Insert. and 
first of all, I'm going to show you recommended. In 2007 and above, they give you recommended um, pivot tables. If you have an earlier version of Excel, you will not get this. So I'm going to click on recommended pivot tables, and do you see a pop-up? Yes. Okay. So Excel will make this pivot table for me. And pivot tables are basically reports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sum of tenure by region. Do I want that? Mm, I don't know if I want that. Count of employees by region. That's a good one. I might want that. I have a question. Like, like uh -huh. you said, if you, have, if you have the older version of Excel, you cannot do this, all this. But I have like Excel 365 or Excel yes. 2013. Excel 365, that. yes. Excel 2013, yes, you can do that. But anything less than that, then it's not possible, right? You can do well, pivot tables. You, you can, can do, do pivot tables, but Excel won't create one for you. No, no you have to do it yourself. No, you're doing, we're doing the pivot tables on the Excel, but I think I have, oh wait, I think, yeah, I have Excel 365. Then you should not have this. It will be recommended pivot tables. So after class, if you look, you'll see this. Okay, okay. So, so I could do the Excel 365, uh, I could do this pivot table on the on my Excel 365, right? Yes. All right, thanks, okay. Annie. Okay, some of tenure by department, I could, that's an okay one. Uh, or count of employees by department. Um, I think I'm going to go with count of employees by region, and I'm going to click OK. Okay, so I just created a pivot table. It was very easy. This is my pivot table right here, and this right here is my pivot table taskbar. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But let's say that I wanted to create my own pivot table. So I'm going to go back down here to Zaha Web Consultants. I can change that if I want. I could double click. Maybe I'll change it to employees. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own pivot table. So I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to um, I'm going to click on A1. I always click on A1. I'm going to go insert, and I'm just going to go pivot table. And it's going to ask me uh, select a table range. I'm just going to leave a table. And do I want to put it in a new worksheet? I always put it in a new worksheet. I don't know why I do that, but I do. So I'm going to click OK. And then I have a pivot table. When I click here, you'll see the pivot table fields. If I click off of it, it goes away. So I want to click back on here so I can see the fields. Why is it important to make this, to make your um, first data sheet a table? And I'm going to show you why it's important. I'm going to go back to employees and I now have two pivot tables. I'm going to go to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to hold down control and tap the end key. That takes me to the bottom of the table. So I am going to add an employee. So my last employee was Z W C 107. I'll make it 12. And who is the employee? I'll, my new employee is um, Regis Reginald. Well, you know, I'm going to go Regis. Re, Regis Newcomb. And his name is Regis Newcomb. And they already, whoever made this pivot table already had a formula in it. So the email um, already comes to that. You can also do that um, with 2007 and above when you're making um, a table. It will actually do that for you if everybody has the same um, email address, the same back email address. Like if you everybody had gmail.com, you could do that. So where does he work? I'm going to say he works in... Um, admin. And when did he start? He started yesterday. So, and where does he work? 
uh, cube up. And I'm going to say south. I think that's south. Okay. So in most cases, if you didn't want a person to not do it correctly, you might um, have uh, make it so that they um, click on something and they would just pick, or you could do a form, but that's not what I'm going to do. So I added a new employee. So when I add a new employee to the bottom of the sheet, if I wanted to up, I have to update my pivot table. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go to sheet one, which is my pivot table. And actually I'm going to change this to pivot table one. So I don't get confused and I'll change this to pivot table two. And if I was going to use this for a report, I might even give the table, pivot table a name. Like I could say, um, so I could give this a name. I could say count of employees. So I'm going to do that. Pivot table, I'll call it PT count of employees. Okay. So I added an employee to the south. So it's not going to be reflected because it just looks at the data that I put in. So what I have to do is I have to refresh the data. And to do that, you go to the pivot table tools that pop up when you ever clicked on a pivot table. If I click off the pivot table, they're gone. If I click back on it, they come up. I'm going to go to analyze data and I'm going to refresh the pivot table. I'm going to click on there and I'm going to click on refresh or refresh all. And what happens is this was 10,000. Now it's 10,001 because I added the person to the table. If you don't make it into a table, you actually have to go in and change um, the parameters of the pivot table. So you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is you want to have data that's just very bland and all the data is under in columns. You have to use columns. You can't use rows. And then you are going to make it a table and then you're going to add to the table. And when you add to the table, you have to keep, uh, click refresh and your pivot table refreshes. That's why it's important to make it a table. A lot of people don't do it, but it's very important. Do you have any questions? Okay. No questions. Okay. I'm going to go to pivot table two and I change and I'm going to retype it because I typed pivot table wrong. It's OT. So there I go. OT. Okay. I'm going to click back on this pivot table. And now notice right here that I have all these field names. So this is the one that I created manually. So let's say I want to know, I have all these questions. How many employees are in each region? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the employee ID and move it over. Because each employee ID is unique to one employee that's going to give me a count. So I know that I have, I have uh, 10,001 employees. So I want to know the region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the region under the rows. So now that's going to tell me how many I employees I have in each region. Say I wanted to know each region in each country. I'm going to just drag country under rows and I'm going to get east and then it's going to give me all the countries under here. If I wanted to, I could do it into columns, but um, it won't be very pretty. So, but I could try it. I can move this over here and that doesn't look too bad. So this would be a report. So I would Australia, North, Northeast, South, Southeast. So you have to play with the columns and the rows to see what you want to get. And you can keep adding things. So let's say I wanted to add, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but let's say I wanted to add maybe department under here. Let's see. 
Eh, that doesn't look good. Maybe I'll add it under here. That's not too bad. So I have country and department. If I wanted to change that a little bit, I would drag department on top of country. And that would look a little different. So to see how many employees are in each region, I'm going to just get rid of country. I'm going to just get rid of this. I'm going to just move this over here. And I now know how many employees are in each region. If I wanted to know how many employees are in each country, I'm just going to drag that over. And I could just click here. And it's going to go, that tells me how many employees are in each country. OK, so I want to know what the average tenure of employees is. So I'm just going to take this count of employees and I'm going to just drag it out. I could just drag it out and it's gone. And I don't want country either, so I just drag it out. So I'm back to a blank um, table. So what I want to know is what is the average employee tenure per region? So the number value would be tenure. So it's going to go into values. In most cases, Excel is very, very smart. When you're dealing with numbers, it's automatically going to put it in the values column because you're dealing with numbers. So I want to know, so this is what they have given me is a sum of each of everybody's tenure. That doesn't tell me much. So what I'm going to do is click on the down arrow and I'm going to change the value field settings. So I'm going to click on there and it's going to ask me, well, what do you want to change them to? I want the average. I want to see if I have a tenure problem with any of my regions or countries. And I think I'm going to go to countries. So I'm going to click on OK. So I think I have a tenure problem in my country. So I'm going to click on country. And here, this is OK, but it's a little bit busy. So I wanted to change the way the numbers are displayed. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on number format. And I just want it to be a number, and I want two decimal places. That's fine. I'm going to click OK. So now that makes it a little bit more manageable. So now I can see the average tenure for each of the countries that are in my company. Let's use something, because there's so many here, you know, I could go through them and look, but a good way to use what you have in Excel is I'm going to go back on my home tab and you have something that's very, very good. It's called conditional formatting and it's sort of like, mm, sort of like charting, but it's in, it's in the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these things. I'm going to Go down to, I'm not going to highlight the grand total, I don't care. And I'm going to click on conditional formatting. And I'm going to do top to bottom rules. And I want the bottom 10. I want to see what I have a problem with. So I have a tenure problem. Let's see where I have a real tenure problem. So everybody, everything seems to be six or seven. Sweden is seven. Denmark is seven. But my top to bottom, OK, where I'm having a problem is Cuba. So my, the tenure for Cuba isn't as good as the tenure for the other things. So maybe I need to see who is running Cuba and see if there's a, a, a problem. So that's what the good thing about um, pivot tables is, that you can manipulate the data and you can see trends. So I'm seeing a trend and I'm also can have this as a report. I can give this to my boss and say, you know, we have a tenure problem in Cuba. And uh, you think, oh, this doesn't look that great. But you can 
if I wanted to, I can double click on this and I could change this to say uh, problem areas. Now it says problem areas. So I would give this to my boss and I'd say, okay, these are the problem areas. Um, they're highlighted in red and we have to, these are the um, 10 years that are very low. So, okay, another thing that you can do with pivot tables, say I wanted to just get rid of this one, I'll get rid of this, I'll take it off, take it off, I have a pivot table, I could have just saved this and recreated another pivot table if I wanted to, so if you always wanted to save a pivot table, you can do that, give it a name, save it and then just make another pivot table. If you're going to be always using this pivot table to see something like tenure, you want to save it and just create a new pivot table. In this case, though, I'm just going to, you know, create a new one. and I don't need that one anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. So what is the average tenure per department and how many employees are in the department? So I'm going to click on tenure again. I'm going to click on the down arrow, I'm going to change the field value to average. I'm going to move department into rows. I'm going to click here, right click on the average number of, you know, this row, and I want to change the number formatting. Unfortunately, you have to do that, but if you keep if you save the pivot table or if you just save it right here, then you don't have to do that. So I'm going to go to number. I do like it. Two decimals. Okay. Okay. So now it's doing that. So I want the average tenure per department. These are the departments. These are the tenures. And how many employees are in each department? So I'm going to just do this. And I'm going to move this over. This doesn't tell me anything, but if I move it here, it will give me a count of employees of each department. So now I have a report that I can give someone the average tenure and the number of employees of each department. And if I wanted to change this so that it's, um, I could right click, number formatting again, number, and I do like the thousand separator, so I'm going to use that. And then it does. And then I can get rid of, actually, I can get rid of the decimal points too. I can go back to number and go to zero. Okay. Any questions? No, no questions. Okay. The question. Yeah? Yeah. The pivot tables, how did you get this one? Oh, you went, you went over like auto sum, you went under insert, right? Under here. To get a pivot table, you have to have, first of all, you have to have a, a table. You have to have um, actually a spreadsheet, which you well, make you have to, a table. In order to get a pivot table, you have to make this table first. Um, actually, you, ha you have to have a data sheet first, yes. Otherwise, you have, this, you have to make this type of data sheet. Then, then and after that, then you... Then you insert a table. Yes. Then you click on insert, ta insert table. And the right reason right. you want to insert the table is so you can add to the table. Okay. If you don't insert a table and you just use the data sheet raw, anytime you add something to the data sheet, you're going to have to update. Um, in the, if you go to the, I'm going to go to pivot table too. There's um, click here. I got this up here, so I got to move it down. You have to change the data source. So if you don't make it into a table, instead of refreshing, you're going to have to click on change data source and change the data source every time you add to the table, which you don't want to do. Got so it. that's got it. why you make it into a table. Yeah, so, first you make this a table like this, then you hit the in, you insert a, in the table, yeah. and then you do all that stuff. Yeah. Make a data sheet first, and then you can yeah, you learn, you learn. make it into a table, and then you yeah. can add to the data sheet 
vibe because it's the table. I, I can I learn it more once I do it myself. Yes. Okay. We're going to open up another sheet now. So I'm going to stop my sharing. And I'm going to start a sharing and I'm going to go to the car inventory. So this is another one. So we'll just, repetition is, is good. So what we're going to do, this is a car inventory and I'm going to go to, this is B1. I want to go to A1. Always go to A1. Makes it good. Hopefully there is an A1. No, there isn't. So there should be an A1 on here, but there isn't. So I'm just going to click anywhere in here and I'm going to click on I think you just have to scroll over to the left. I did, but it didn't do it. No, won't do it for some reason. I don't know why. That's very weird. I've never seen that. That is weird. One. It is weird. Let me do a control home. No, that's it. I don't know. I, I downloaded the sheet, so who knows? So there could be something in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to usually a one you don't have to you can go anywhere in the table and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on format as table and then i'll just pick the first one and it says my table has heading yes then i'm going to click there okay now i made it into a table so i'm going to click on insert I could go to recommended tables if I want to, or I can start from a pivot from a from scratch. And I'm going to click on pivot table. I'll leave a table one new worksheet. I usually always go into a new worksheet and I click here. So other questions. So this is a worksheet about selling cars. So I have some questions that I want to know. I, uh, oh. Did you uh -huh. see if column A is hidden on that original sheet? See if column A is hidden. Okay. Let me check. Yep. So I'm it's gonna, blank, huh? That's what I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So now I'll update this. I'll refresh it now because I made it into a column, so it should refresh because it, it will have a. So I will go. So that was a catch from Ron. Oh, good. Hidden column. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that too, but I said, ah, you know. I didn't think of it. I don't know why you would make something with a hidden column unless you had, I don't know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refresh it. Because if I don't refresh it, I'll refresh all. Because if I don't refresh it, um, it's not going to, even though there's nothing in A, it's going to think that B through something. So now I refreshed it. Okay, so I'm going to find out how many blue cars do I have? So, I have 24 blue cars. How many blue cars do I have in certain models? So, I have a blue Accord, a blue Altima. And actually, I that's, not, get, that's not, not giving me blue. It's not blue. It's not blue. That's what I wanted to do. It's not blue. So I wanted to know these are just uh, my count of color and my row labels. So if I wanted to know what was blue, what I would do, and this is what we're doing now, is I would add something called a, um, a filter. With 2000... I think 13 and above, it's called a slicer you can add. So I'm going to click on add a slicer, insert a slicer, and I'm going to do color. And I'm going to click OK. So this basically is a filter. So if I wanted to just know about the, my blue cars, I'd click here and it's going to tell me how many blue cars I have. 
If I want to have blue and silver, I'm going to hold down the control key as I click on silver, and it's going to show me the blue and the silver. If I'm going to add green, I can hold on control and I can add a green. So when I add the green. So this appears on top of your report. So if you give your report to your boss and you know send it to them, they can actually um, look at this and filter it as they're looking at it. So now I know if I wanted to know just how many blues I had, I'm just going to click on blue so I have three blues. And it's telling me it's an Accord, a Corolla, and uh, I don't know what a CRV is. Honda. It's a Honda. Honda? SUV. Okay. okay. So now I know. I didn't know. And if I wanted to know the make, I could drag that over here and I could see the make of the thing. And if I said, you know, I want to see if this looks a little different. So I'm going to move the make up and the model will be under. And that will look a little different. So maybe somebody, I want somebody uh -huh. wanted somebody wanted you to show um again where you got the slicer. The slicer is up. It's under. Let me get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. Basically, it's a filter. And the filters are right here. So I could do it here, too, if I wanted to. But the slicer is under the pivot table tool, so you have to click on the pivot table. You have to go to Analyze. And it's Insert Slicer. And that will come up. And then you got to pick. You could have more than one slicer. So maybe I want color. And maybe I want price for some reason. Or in this case, I've only got two here, so I'll go make model. Okay, so I have three slicers now. So maybe I want to know, I want a silver. Hmm. When I click there, it gave me all this, but I don't. I want to know if I have a silver Toyota, and I want to know. Well, it's a Corolla, but you can see I don't have that. It's a Corolla, so so you can add as many slicers as you want, and then they sit in, on top of the uh, report, and uh, then you can see what you want to see. In to have all these, it doesn't make sense, so I'm just gonna. You click on them they're like a, a picture you can when you click on them and they have uh, handles around it you can hit the delete key and they go away I'm gonna click on this one again I don't need this hit the delete key usually it doesn't make sense to have more than one slicer so I'm gonna um, here and since I don't see anything I'm gonna click here and get everything back That's on make, model. Okay. So, there. So I might have to get rid if it, it's not working correctly. Right here is where your uh, filters are. And you might have to get rid of them and, and you might have to reselect them again because I didn't have any of them selected anymore you have to click on select and click OK and down here is going to tell you what filters are on so it's I can put a filter under make I can put a filter under model and then I have color right here is a separate filter and that's a slicer so that doesn't appear under the filters any questions about that And to get rid of it, you just can delete it. You can delete it from here, too. You should be able to, but you can just click on delete and get rid of it. But if you don't want to use the, uh, the slicer, you don't have to, but you can. Any questions?
No. Okay. So how many different models of card do I have? So I'm going to just do a new one. I'm going to go back to here. I'll go back to car inventory. Click here. I'm going to click on insert because I want to keep that other one. So I'll call this make and model. So I'm going to go back to the car inventory. I'm going to click on insert pivot table. I'm going to table two because I changed that to make and model. So that's okay, fine. We have a question. Uh huh. Um, do you still have the original table after creating the pivot table? You, you will have your original table, but it will be made into a table. Yes, this is your original table, but you made it into a table. So basically what you have first, you make a data sheet. And then you make it into a table. And the reason you make it into a table, and it's, it's a data sheet. It, it's the same thing. It looks a little nicer, and you can do things with the table that you can't do with the data sheet. So if you just made it into a data sheet and you left it that way, Anytime you made a pivot table or anytime you made changes to your pivot table, if you just left it and didn't make it into a table, what you'd have to do is you'd have to click on your pivot table, I'll click on this one, and you'd have to, instead of click on, clicking on refresh under the table tools, you'd have to click on change data source. So then you would have to check the data source it's going to bring this up table one okay and then this isn't going to do it because i did it but you would actually it would you'd have to say like a1 if you added like a column or something a1 actually if you added a column you'd have to change the data source so let's add a column and you'll see how to do it so i've got my my car inventory and i'm just going to add a column And I'm going to call it date. So I'll call it date. And I'm going to go to 12. Let's see if I can do it. 12, 2020. Let's see if I can do this. And I'm going to change this to format cells. I'm going to change it to number. Well, I'll change it to date. Right click on it to change it into a date. Let's see if it's going to do this. Yes. I'm going to drag this down and it's going to automatically number for me in successive numbers. Okay. So I got this date and for some reason it's real important and I have to put it into my pivot table. When I go here and I go to make a model, date doesn't show up as any of my of my um field. no it doesn't show up and let's see if i click on i don't think it will if i click on it's not giving it to, i'm going to click on refresh and see if it does but it won't yeah it did so because I made it into a table, it will automatically refresh it. It will take the date. If I didn't make this into a table and I just left it a data sheet and I added a column, I would have to go and I would have to like drag the marquee over the last column. So it automatically updated it for me. So that's why you always want to make it into a table. You don't have to, but it'll save you a lot of time if you do. So make it into a table, and then if you add to the bottom, and if you add to a column or anything else, it will automatically update after you hit refresh. you got to hit refresh. So if you add anything to the um, car inventory, which I added a column, 
and I clicked on Refresh All, it added it to my field list. So, any questions? Okay, so what is the average cost of a car? Let's say I needed to know this. So the average cost of a car, I have all these different things here. I'm just going to undo them. So I'm going to click on cost, average cost of a car. This, that's a sum, but if I wanted average, I would click here, click on the down arrow, go to value field settings, and I'm going to click average. And I want to know the average cost of the make of a car. So the average cost of a Chevrolet would be that I have would be $3,250. If I right click on here and I go to number format and I'm going to go to I'll go to accounting, that's fine. Click OK. So then I know the average cost of a car. So let's say I wanted the average cost of, I wanted to know the model. I'm going to just drag it down here, model. And it's going to give me Chevrolet Impala Silverado. If I wanted, I thought, you know, let's see if it looks better with columns. It doesn't. So I'm just going to move it back over. Looks better this way. So let's say I wanted to change this from average cost to something else. I can double click on it. It's going to bring it up. I can't use cost as um, a field heading because cost is already there. I cannot ever duplicate anything. So I could use average cost or I could just use average. Average per car. Or I could use average cost per car. Price per car. Average price I'll use. And then that's a way for you to change the way your report looks. You can change the column headings by double clicking on them. Or also I could click in there, over type it, hit the space bar, and hit the enter key. It does the same thing. But it's it's probably easier to just double click and then just over type it. But it can't be any... I can't use any of these words in it, so I can't say cost. can't do that. It has to be totally different. Okay, so I know what is the average cost of a car. I want to know what the average mileage is now. So I'm going to get rid of cost. I'm going to go to mileage, drag it down, click on my down arrow, and I'm going to change the value field. And I'm going to change it to average. You also have minimum, maximum. You have all these things that you can, I don't know what these things are, but I could count. I can do product, you know, anything like that. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to change the, the average field. So I'm going to go to number formatting. And I'm going to change it to just number. And I'll have two decimal places. That's fine. Okay. So the average of mileage. And actually, I like go back to number formatting, and I'm going to add the. Um, yeah, I like that. I don't know why. I do too. I think it looks nicer. Yeah, and actually, I'm going to get rid of the extra too. I'm going to go to format cells again. Oh no. Oh, yeah, I can. I go to format cells. I'm going to get rid of the decimal places. Okay. Any questions? And I should have just done the whole thing, but that's okay. Any questions? Why? Okay. Wait, we have a question. Okay. Why number format versus format cells? I think number format does everything. Format cells, it only did that one cell. I got rid of that, so I went to format cells, and now it does the whole thing. So if you click on format cells right here, it'll only format the one cell that you have uh, highlighted. I don't want to highlight anything. I wanted the whole thing. I don't want to highlight, so I'm going to click right click, and I'm going to go to number format, and then it does all the, the numbers under in the pivot table. 
So that's why I want to do that. I tried that, you know, I just tried it because I never did that before because I always did number format. And I thought, and then you saw that it only did the one cell. So you want to do number formatting. Other things also that you can do that aren't in your book, but it actually, um, I'm going to be sending you a list of links that you can take. One, uh, it's called, it used to be called lynda.com, now it's called uh, linkedin.com learning. If you are a Downers Grove resident, you can take these um, Linda courses. The pivot table one that they have is excellent, but there are, I think I have four other YouTube videos that are um, excellent also, and they're about um, pivot tables. But I want you to right click in a pivot table and you have pivot table options. Uh, some of these that you might want to look at are for an empty cell show. If you always want your empty cells to show zero or nil, or you want it to show um, um, dash. dash, you can put that in there. Also, a lot of times, if you have a really big spreadsheet, you don't, you're not able to find, like this isn't that big, but if you had a, a huge spreadsheet and you wanted to find the column headings, an easier way to do that, it, this is, it's matching the source data. Sort A to Z. Now it sorts it by cost, data, model, so that I have this all in alphabetical order so it's easier for me to find. Um, you could just leave it the way it was because there isn't that many, uh, there's not that many inf much information, but some people have reports that are columns and columns long. And if you want to use the pivot table feature, you might want to do that. Another thing that you might want to do is you're going to click on, and I will send this to you, this isn't in your book, Print pivot table options. Another thing that you might want to do is right here it says auto fit column width on update. That's if you change your report. So if I'm always changing the size of my columns in the report, I'm going to uncheck this. Because if I leave it on auto fit, every time I open my report, it's going to make the columns smaller. And I may not want this, or it's going to make the columns bigger. So if I want my report to always stay the way I have it, I've changed it, I've you know, changed the columns, I made them smaller, um, I'm going to uncheck auto fit column width on update because it will just keep bringing it back to the way it was before, and I may not want that. I'm going to uncheck that. There's also another thing. I can get rid of use grand totals for rows or use grand totals for columns if I don't want them. A lot of times you don't. Um, this is printing data. Okay, this is a good one to have. Every t If you click on refresh data when opening the file, if you close a pivot table, or you're not working with the pivot table, so you forgot about the pivot table, but you're adding data to the source file. So I, I got five new ca uh, cars. I added them to the source file. Oh, okay. And then I closed down the file. If I have this clicked, when I open up the file again, it automatically refreshes my pivot table. So if I forgot to refresh my pivot table, and um, as I added the new things, if I close the file and open it up again, Excel automatically knows to refresh the pivot table. So you might want to put that on, and I will actually send this to you um, during the week, and you'll get this. Um, but that's what I would do, because um, sometimes you forget to do things, and you don't you want to make sure that your report is uh, up to date and maybe you forgot to hit refresh but if you close out of 
the Excel spreadsheet, open it up again. Excel will automatically refresh the pivot table as long as you made it into a table. Okay. Any questions? Gotta hit OK. See, it says when I refresh on the opening. So if I wanted to refresh it. So the refresh on opening is if I close this and brought it back up again, it would automatically refresh my pivot table. Okay. Did we get that? Where's my word? Yes. Okay. Um, this is something that you need to play with. So you're... You can make your reports look any way you want to by moving these things. So if I click here and move this over here, yeah, that's okay. Give me a count and model. Uh, you can, it's cost. Maybe I'm gonna use the cost over here. You can make these as big or as small as you want to. And if I did wanna save this, I would just make a new one. You know, so I want to save this. This is very, I like this one. I want to save it. So I'm going to go back to car inventory. I'm going to click on insert and I'm just going to insert a new pivot table. So if you do want to save your pivot tables, just leave them in the sheet and um, I would give them a name. I, I would put maybe pivot table, maybe give it a name, a model, whatever the pivot table is, so you know what it is. And then you can always refresh it. So um, just always remember after you click on the pivot table, so I'm going to go make model, and then I'm going to go price. Okay, so I just did make model and price. That was an easy pivot table. And that's what I'll call it. Maybe I'll call it PT. Make model price so now i know and then i will save it and i'll make another if i need another pivot table i'll just make another pivot table they're all saved into the same worksheet i can always go back and if i click refresh or if i add something to this i'm going to click on go to the bottom and maybe i'll add Toyota. What's a Toyota? Corolla. 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 Oh, it already comes up and I'll make it red. And I'll say mileage 13,000. 13. Or you can put a, out a BMW. Well, I've already we're not, we're so not. Gonna, <laughs> And I'll say it's $500. It's really or even a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I looked up Cadillacs today. Escalade, one was $103,000. And I thought, oh one. my gosh. If 500 and the cost, I'll make it 300 It's really in a bad condition. And I'll put uh, 12 03 Or you could add the Chevy Apollo. Well. I'm not really good with cars. So, okay, so now when I go back here and I go to my make and model and price, I'm going to click on refresh. I'm going to have to move this over. I'm going to go to my analyze tools for my pivot table. I'm going to click on refresh. Refresh all. And it should change. My pivot table. Let's see if it does. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It's a Corolla, right? Mm -hmm, Corolla. Yeah. It changed it. So that's what you want to do. You want to refresh it after you make it into a table. So any more questions? This is going. This was recorded, and we're gonna. I'll send out the link when it is comes up. Um, and, but if you ever have any more questions, I am gonna send out. Um, new copy of the book and I might add um, I think I'll add to the copy of the book I'll add um, how to get to uh, pivot table settings and I think I'll add that to the book too I'm also going to be sending you places where you can get training for free so if there's no more questions 
Okay, no okay. questions. Have a happy holiday, and okay. uh, hopefully we'll see you well, next year. We are going to be starting in-house uh, in training, just so you know. So uh, we are going to be starting in-house training. Some of the training is going to be taped, but not all. You got one on 10, 13, 15, 16. I don't know, but um, it's it's going to be start January. We're going to have up to six people will be trained. So if you have any questions, just give us a call. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. This was great. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. I can't see anybody. Good night. Good night. A happy holiday. You got courses on 10, 16, 17, and 18 of this December. Uh, actually, we don't. We have two more courses left. Okay, because it says over here on. Yeah, on, on the thing, uh, we anybody who was in a in the class, we did send a um, we did send something to um, that we had to. Uh, cancel two classes. We had to cancel uh, the Facebook garage sale class and we had to cancel the Zoom for the holidays. Yeah. But we do have both of them on the Yahoo oh. um, channel. Okay, so these are all canceled, right? Good. Uh, the, the bottom ones. The last class that we have, I think, is the... Um, on the Friday. Uh, no, the last class we have is the camera class. Okay, so that's canceled. The camera class is not canceled. Only only the Facebook sales market is canceled. And Zoom for the holiday. And Zoom. Zoom, okay, Zoom for holiday and, and the Facebook is canceled. And, and, and what about introduction to Microsoft Excel 2010? No, 2010, oh, 2016. Sorry, 2016, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Friday. So you can sign up for that if you want. Oh, I think I'm already am. So only okay. the only the Facebook sales thing is canceled, and just as I think Zoom for the holidays is canceled. Zoom for the holidays, but all of them are um, online. So if you want on to YouTube. watch them, they're on YouTube. All right. Okay. Anyway, anyway, I won't be here that day. I'll be out of town. Okay. Well, have a good Thanksgiving or no <laughs> good Christmas. Christmas. Don't, don't go back in time. We already did do Thanksgiving. I don't want to do yeah. it. <laughs> so, You're living in Back to the Future or Back to the Future. Yes, back I am. <laughs> or I'm thinking thinking in next Thanksgiving. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. See you bye. later. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.